Hi, I'm Julie Johnson with Firebox Training. Today I'm going to show you how to create an Oracle ADF tree and keep the different levels of the tree actually synchronized with the underlying iterator. So when you select an item any in any level of the tree, you can actually see the data, corresponding data in a form right next to it. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do here is create a new application. And I'll say Fusion Web Application. And we'll just call this Trees. And my package prefix is Firebox Training. So any Java code will belong to this package, or at least that base package. And uh, let's go ahead and hit Finish. Now I'm going to create my quick little model. And we are wor working with the HR schema. So all I'm going to do here is say New ADF Business Components. And to make this quick, I'm going to create my connection right here. Test my connection, looks good. Now I'm going to work with my entity objects. So I'm going to select the entity objects that I'm interested in. I'm looking for countries. I guess the top of the, the hierarchy there is regions. And then countries, locations, departments, and employees. Now, typically I take the time to stick with the naming convention and call these singular names, but I'm trying to save some time, so I'll just hit Next. And I'll move all those over to now make them available as updatable view objects. We don't need any query-based view objects in this example. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and collapse that and let's create a web page. So right click on web content and create a JSF page. And we'll just call this treetest.jsf. Now you'll see here that there's nothing under data controls, but as soon as I refresh that, we'll see the app module data control right in here. And really what we're interested in is just the top layer, the top level of our tree. In fact, I can go to my app module in here, go to my data model and clean some of this up. I'm going to get rid of any of these top levels that are not the regions. Now, I am going to have to have a cascading uh, set of view object instances. So I look for countries right here and then the child of locations. And then there's locations and the child of departments departments, the child of employees. Okay, so now that we've saved that, you can see that we have the same structure in our data control. Okay, so now let's go ahead and take our top level, bring it onto the page. We're strictly dealing with a simple tree. We're not going to worry about any fancy containers or anything like that. Here's our tree level rules, and down here is where we specify what we want to have visible. So I just want the region name to show up and I don't have to specify a target data source because that first level is already synchronized with the underlying iterator. I'll show you in a minute what that means. But I do want to create a next level of my tree. So that's the countries view. I only want that to display the country name. In a moment we will create a target data sport source but let's just create the tree first. Locations I'm going to bring everything over and then get rid of a couple of these. And I want the street to show up first, then city, state, province, then postal code. Department. Employees view. And let's have the employee ID, the first name, and the last name show up. Okay, I'll go ahead and hit OK. That was the tree binding editor. So if we ever need to make some changes to that, I'll show you how to quickly get to that binding editor. You'll see on our page it looks very simple. That's what a tree looks like. If I right click on this tree, either here from the structure window right here and just say go to binding, or I could have just gone directly to the bindings tab right there. Notice that this is a tree binding and I can edit this and I can see everything that I created right there. So what I'd like to do is create bindings for the other iterators. 
For example, I have the regions, but I want to create iterator bindings for all those other levels. So I just hit that plus right there in the binding uh, right there, and I say iterator. And I'm going to choose that second level. So now I have the countries iterator. See how it's pointing to there? I'll do the same thing for the third level. Fourth level. And the fifth level. And there's our employees view. Okay, that looks great. Now see what that looks like right here? That's beautiful. So now, going back to our tree binding, I can edit this, I go to the second level, and I want to point to the iterator that corresponds with the country. So I'll go to my target data source, here's my EL picker, here are my bindings, and here's the countries view to iterator. I'll do the same thing for locations. Departments. and employees. Now we're configured so synchronization, uh, the currency is maintained for every level in our tree. Okay, so one more thing I want to do to my page. I'm going to place inside of my page a panel stretch layout and in the center I'm going to insert a panel splitter. So I have a first and a second facet and then I'll just drag my tree into that first facet so on the on the second facet right here is where I'd like to have a form and I, I literally I, I could have a form for each level of these nodes. Uh, what I'm going to do though just to save time so I'm just going to put a couple of them in here so maybe I'll do the countries form and I'll just make this, it can be either updatable or a read-only form. I'm just trying to show you that it is uh, synchronized. And let me just do the same thing for the next level. And if I wanted these to look really nice I could also place them inside of like a panel header uh, so it had a nice little heading in there. Now, I have a, see, I dragged on top of the screen here, and it looks like it accidentally embedded one panel form inside of the other, so I'm going to fix that. I'm going to place this right in here, and so now they're on the same level. That looks a lot better. So as I mentioned, if I wanted to put this inside of, uh, surround it with a panel header, I could do that pretty easily, like this. Here's my panel header, and now I can change the text to make this read like country. Country details. And I could do the same thing right here. And if you only wanted to show one form, uh, depending on which node you selected. You could accomplish that through the uh, switcher component, but that is beyond the scope of this tutorial. Okay, so let's give this a whirl now. I'm going to right-click on my page and we're going to run it. Okay, let's look at our results now. Here we have Europe, and if I expand this and I click on Switzerland, you see how this is automatically updating? In fact, uh, let me choose one of these other locations. So everything is updating quite nicely. Let's go to the United States. Looking great. So we do have synchronization and I do want to emphasize that if these were updatable forms all you would need to do is provide you know a me the input components and a you know a commit operation and it would update this automatically on the left hand side as well. well I hope you got a lot out of this video tutorial. Come visit our website at www.fireboxtraining.com.